Hello and welcome to this uh, wonderful new episode of the Values Workshop. Uh, I have with me uh, a new friend, uh, Ritesh Kumar Ji. And uh, for your information, the series is called The Other Side Of. The Other Side Of, I have covered a lot of things, including people from arts and business and finance and banking. Whoever is willing to talk about the vulnerable side of being and uh, how they face up to those vulnerabilities uh, have been kind enough to be guests on this particular series. I've been doing this for around two and a half, three years now um, and uh, have had a good time so far. Uh, welcome to the show, Ritesh Ji. Thank you. Thank you so much, Satsri Akal, Ji. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, the this particular episode will be called the other side of traveling. Uh, just to start with, so one of the things that I want to ask you, I was talking to somebody a couple of days back and it was a very eclectic kind of group, one or two meditators, uh, a businessman, another friend and we were sitting and talking and we were talking about somebody who was about to leave for a world tour kind of thing. And this other friend who was sitting, he says, Are, I used to travel a lot before marriage. I think I should start traveling again. And those meditative yeah. friends who were uh, who were like professional meditators, like nuns, uh, they have dedicated their lives to finding meditators. themselves. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, like they've dedicated their lives to one pursuit, which I think is fairly noble. And uh, they started talking to us. And by the end of the discussion, this guy who was talking about going for traveling, he says, I've traveled a lot outside. Now I need to seek something inside. And it was a, it was a wonderful end to uh, those couple of hours that we were chatting. So my question to you, uh, you travel on business, you mentioned in the couple of uh, minutes we were chatting earlier. Uh, what is the difference between traveling for business and traveling as a hobby for you, if at all you have traveled, or else for other people who travel as a hobby, how do you view traveling? When we are traveling for business, actually we have a goal. You know, we have a goal that we have to sell these much products or we have to get a new customer or we have to develop the area for uh, our products, we have to develop the market. But when we are traveling as a hobby, you want to know more things. You want to know more about life in general, you know, um, about something which is new to you. You are more curious. So that's the basic difference, I understand. The goals are different uh, when you are traveling for a hobby, when you are traveling for a business, the goals are different. Okay. So uh, when the when the unplanned happens to you while traveling on business, because what uh, I was thinking is, yes. so how do you deal with it? Uh, are you frustrated or do you take it in your stride and try to do something? How do you view, and suppose it is difficult at that point that you cannot adjust so quickly for whatever reason, how do you view the unplanned then? I think it's beautiful. Most of the time I really like it. Uh, in the sense, sometimes yeah, it throws you off uh, from your, uh, uh, you know, days like one or two days you have to travel extra because something unplanned has happened. Uh, a few days back, I was traveling uh, in Uttar Pradesh and then there was this gangster uh, murdered and, you know, there was curfew and all. So also when I have traveled a lot in Northeast India, so uh, Northeast India, a lot of people don't know that it is actually it's it's disturbed part of India now a little settled down but again with Manipur uh, burning like this you know it's it's again disturbed so there you know you plan the unplanned like you know that there is going to be something which will you know throw you off here and there but that's how you know when you are traveling you know you are ready for it you. Uh, you accept it, especially when you are traveling so much as I do, and I've been doing for 25 years now, maybe about 27. Uh, you are ready for it. You know that there is going to be something which is uh, which is off the track or which is which is new for me. Uh, 
something may happen. Okay. This is very interesting because most times uh, planning the unplanned is something that you don't hear. Uh, <laughs> does this does this attitude when you are on business uh, help you uh, in real life? Real life, I mean, when you're not, uh, when you are in your comfort zone where your office is settled and your uh, home is settled, your schedule is more or less similar. Um, does this attitude of planning the unplanned help you here also or it doesn't matter at all? There is some sort of element of unplanning is always there when you plan something. You know, that that uh, because the kind of work doing, there is a lot of things which we are involved in. We are manufacturing one item, there are so many items involved in it. Uh, the raw material, different, different raw materials, then the workmanship, then the finished products, packing and then selling. So there is some kind of uncertainty is always there. Uh, but with time, you know, you understand how to deal with uncertainties and you know that this is just a momentary and something will come up, uh, some solution will come up and, uh, you know, it will be solved. And even if it does not, sometimes, you know, suppose something does not work out, that's okay. okay. That is also a part of life. That's okay. Okay. You actually preempted my next question. So I'll have to think of a new one. Uh, this was a question I was going to ask you when it doesn't turn out the way you want. So uh, now that you're a business traveler, if I were to call you, mm -hmm. what are your personal ways of dealing with the unplanned? Suppose in spite of our best planned unplanned solutions and uh, there is still more unplanned that the that this life throws at us very often. Yes. You yes. you miss your Sometimes, train yes, yes. or something that happens, or maybe some appointment doesn't happen or go as planned. Maybe the client lands up saying something that you did not expect or anything at all. Life is so full of uncertainty. Uh, generally speaking, how how do you view uncertainty, and is it a positive or is it a negative according to you? It depends how you take it. You know, uh, what kind of mindset you are in. Sometimes you are in a mindset where you know any uncertainty, it's not you're not ready for it. Sometimes you are in a mindset where you say, okay, whatever comes, doesn't matter, I'll deal with it. And uh, when something unplanned happens for, for me, you know, I plan next. That's how I deal with unplanned things. I plan next. Okay, this is what has happened. Now what next? So what next is very, very important in life. Uh, what next? Okay. Um, what is the toughest part of having to travel? How do you, is there any problem vis-a-vis -vis handling your business back home because you are not in charge at that moment and work has to continue, obviously, because you are traveling doesn't mean that work back home wherever manufacturing is happening because I have known, I have friends who are entrepreneurs who are more manufacturer led. My brother has a, a electronic shop. So I know what traders kind of think. I know what wholesalers think. I've had other friends. So I find there is a subtle difference in each mannerism and how they approach business. Some people like the manufacturer worries about the uh, I remember there was this discussion. He landed up saying something. Ye wire mein three and a half paisa zyada lagta hai. <laughs> and I was like, three and a half paisa? <laughs> How the hell have you calculated that? Mm -hmm. But that is the amount of detail at that point. This is a couple of years back, but it kind of struck me. I have never heard my brother talk like this. And I, being a consultant, writer, so creative person, I. I'm a lump sum guy. The finance bores me. Chalo, yaar, dhik, itne mein ho to kalo, aage chalte hai, we'll figure out. So, ye paisa, paisa to aata hi nahi hai. But then you respect the fact that somebody has to look at that aspect also. So, uh, coming back to my original question, when you are not in charge here and this kind of detailing is required, uh, what is it that you tell yourself or how do you deal with this entire, the bigness of the business here? See, uh, what this is important, you know, uh, that when you are traveling, you have to create a system so that your work that does not hamper, you know, it, it is. I usually, uh, I'm usually stepney 
you know i only come in when something is out of the system then just to you know repair that for the temporary period otherwise most of the work which we are doing we have systemized it so anything which i do after some time i like to get it into system so that i don't have to look into the day to day things that is uh, first for the business secondly you ask me uh, how do uh, it impacts me when i am traveling so much uh, there are two things to it like uh, one is physical and one is an emotional situation emotional yes i do miss my kids a lot uh, sometimes you know i do miss home you miss uh, food yeah. and you know the comfort the comfort zone you are in and physically i think it has uh, it has been lovely i have always uh, enjoyed it physically i am very very fit so it is not so tiring on me you know for some people uh, traveling is like oh my god i have to go and you know it's bothering them for me if i have to travel today and it's like a 20 days plan let's say for a part of northeast part of india or let's say south india or i'll say okay let's go you know um, so physically it does not tire me so much uh, but then there are times when a uh, little bit of tiredness do come uh, for example i was traveling uh, from jaipur to delhi i was just finishing my tour and it's about a 5 6 hour journey on the road some people travel by four and a half hours also so it was raining and then there was this traffic jam and it took me around uh, around 12 hours to reach and you know we we were stuck in a traffic at at night at about 11 o'clock and till, till 2 i could not move and then you know somehow we made a way and we through through villages 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 we managed to reach early in the morning at uh, uh, you know in, in delhi where i was supposed to reach by uh, 10 or 11 so there are some times when you get a little tired but otherwise it's okay it's fun you know it's 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 nice and you will enjoy work more when you enjoy this traveling part of it so i enjoy it i love it i sometimes make some videos and put it on social media on insta handle or facebook and uh, uh, you know sometimes I, I just enjoy it i, I like new things i like I, I like nature i like people i like to speak to people i like to speak to strangers uh, this is something which really um, gives me a different perspective and I, I love traveling i love doing what i do so wonderful that's it so uh, so let's uh, throw a spanner in your works and say if everything is so good when do you get frustrated or bored or uh, when are you unhappy is there anything that doesn't work for you at times or have you found the way to happiness <laughs> <laughs> yes i have found the way to happiness you can say um, uh, sometimes there are uh, little frustrations where things don't don't go according to your plan, but that is very very temporary. You know, it's it's. I, I always feel it's not about falling. It's about how fast you uh, pick up yourself, how fast you stand up again. That's important. And uh, otherwise, normally, you know, I enjoy life. I am a joyful guy. I I, I am happy. You know, I'm I'm happy. So that's how it goes yeah. for me. Okay. Um, are there any uh, are there any people who help you with your business? Uh, oh, of course, back home. Yeah, back home. Uh, no, home is home. I usually keep it different. You know, home and business. Yeah, yeah. Not by back home. I meant in, your, in the territory. But there are people. Yeah, there are people in my business in hierarchy who are taking care of different things. Even if I'm uh, off, let's say if I have to go off for twenty days for some work or I want to go on a holiday. My day-to-day -day activities will be taken care of. That is why God's grace, everything is in place, no problem. Okay. And uh, so you are not a hands-on person when you're traveling. You don't need to know, what happened all on system, no. I just need to, at the end of the day, every all the reports come in. And I just have to have a look. And if something is off the track too much, then otherwise I interfere. Otherwise, I, I just don't interfere. I let things go on. Uh, but there are some times when, you know, you need to change the system. Suppose, uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, there was a, a circular from the government that they needed uh, everything to be packed above 50 micron plastics. So that was something, you know, that you need to change the whole system because what we were buying or what we were packing. So you change the system and then again, it, it, it goes on. Yeah. So it's, it's about How does your family... Systems family look at this you did say that you miss your kids 
<laughs> uh, I think they, uh, the kids, the kids, uh, they enjoy when I'm back home. Uh, yeah, the family, they do miss me. So how do you deal with that pressure at home? Or is there no pressure? <laughs> I don't take pressure. I mean, they take pressure, but I don't take pressure. I, I enjoy it. So it's okay. Mm. So uh, now let's talk uh, something about the way you conduct your business. Uh, we did talk about the unplanned. Are there any do's and don'ts for you in business in terms of values and ethics? The things that you will never, never do at all, irrespective of, of the profits involved. Uh, in the world that we stay today, this is very difficult to adhere to, but I would want to know what is it that you do and if you could share something. Uh, see, first of all, we never cheat our customers. Never, you know. Suppose we have, uh, like I uh, brought out one row with the, it is written 10 meters or 20 meters on that row. In the market, you will find that uh, it will be short, you know, it will be like nine meters or nine and a half meters. Nobody, when you are buying that rope uh, packet, you are not actually, you know, measuring with the tape. At the same time, especially when you are buying foil paper, uh, you will see it's written 10 meters or just 10, you know, you think it's 10 meters, but actually a lot of times it's not 10 meters. Um, in, in many cases, it is not like that. So first of all, we give what we write or what we promise. That is number one. Number two, with my experience and uh, with the kind of uh, uh, like my father and grandfather, they have done it. Like we have been made to understand this, that Whatever I'm making, you know, if I'm making something, I'm selling it at, let's say, 40 rupees. By the time it goes in the customer's hands, end user's hands, it's costing him about 100 bucks. So that thing has to be worth more than 100, 100, 500, 10. You know, if he's getting something, it should be more worth than what he's paying for it. That is very important. Okay. Um... This is a good uh, new angle you brought into it. Uh, what you were taught by your parents and grandparents vis-a-vis -vis business. So is this a traditional business that you've been doing for a uh, Traditional in the sense that we have been in the similar line. Uh, but I am basically, I have developed it in Delhi in last 10 years. So the products are different, but you can say we are in more or less in the similar household category. Okay. Like making so, articles for household goods. So, yeah. Okay, so uh, what is it that you were, when you joined the business, what was it that was difficult about joining a business where your elders were already doing it and uh, you came with fresh ideas? Was there any, um, were there any obstacles to your way of thinking? Were you very excited or depressed or happy or how did that experience of taking over from the earlier generation and developing I never took uh, over actually. <laughs> you know, we, I started on a different, uh, like they were doing what they were doing. And when I started, I set up a different factory and I started with different products. And uh, you know what they were doing, that, that is still being run and being taken care by someone else. Um, I'm doing uh, what I started. So it's, it's in the similar lines, but actually I started it mostly. Uh, yeah, back there, I did not understand so much um, and I think I was a little ahead of time, you know, what the product which I will bring in, sometimes they will start doing very well after uh, two years of my, you know, launching the product. So what I understood that you have to be on time, you know, with the market. You cannot be ahead of time, you cannot be late also. So, you know, you have to be on time when you are launching a product. Uh, you need to understand that the market really needs it. And there is a gap and then you launch it. Okay. Um, when you started your business, uh, since there, your forefathers and your father, your grandfather were already in business, kind of, uh, although you did start a different business, uh, there has been a lot of talk about uh, nepotism in other industries. But... Uh, and this is one of the examples quite a few people have talked about that, well, traditionally, business houses do run like this. What is your take on uh, people who have an unfair advantage in business uh, 
or is it not unfair at all? How do you view this aspect of running the family business and making it bigger? And uh, sometimes they are not given enough credit for doing so. Uh, there is no nepotism in business, actually, you know. You don't make good product, you are out of the market. It is simple as that. You know, the customer, suppose uh, uh, there is a big company, suppose any big company, or they make making a product. I'll give you an example of uh, uh, Kodak Reels, if you remember, you know. They did not change with the market. Whoever comes, you know, it's out of the market, it's gone, you know. If they would have come with the camera and, uh, you know, something like that, maybe it would have been hit. So a company which was valued uh, millions of dollars, within few years, it was bankrupt. Uh, same went on with uh, the companies uh, which were doing very well in typewriters. So you have to change with the market and you have to bring the products which are suitable for the customer's needs. So in business, there is no nepotism ever, you know, you and uh, uh, one has to understand what is the market demanding? like what is the need of the market like what you can offer you know so i don't think there is any nepotism in the business so, I, okay, I, 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 I strongly feel that a uh, son of a businessman not necessarily he will be a great businessman even if he has everything maybe he'll have ah. money because his father has given him money you know yeah. to survive that was my but question whether he is able to do good business or not it's totally uh, depends upon his ability and of course, you know, what's this. Wonderful. Uh, you're going fast and you're giving me uh, answers to the next question <laughs> before I come up with it, which is... Uh, Am I ahead of time here also? <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying that. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, another question that I forgot, which I had in my mind while you were talking about your business systems. Mm -hmm. Where is room for creativity uh, for the company if the systems are so well defined? How do you view uh, novelty, new ideas, and how do you ensure that they enter the business for you? Is it only you who think of it or even your staff can come and give you the, such ideas? Everybody is able, I mean, everybody is open to give ideas and sometimes they can press me also, like give me a please bring this product because you know when we are going and people are demanding it so we try and create and systems are for day-to-day -day stuff you know for new things we don't have system we just sometimes it works well sometimes it does not work well so once it has started working once it's doing well then we put it in a system okay this is how this is where we are getting the raw material from this is where we are getting the packaging material from. This is where we are going to sell. This is going to be the prices and stuff. So then we put it into system for creativity. Without creativity, you cannot survive in a business. Whatever it is, you know, in business, it's like, if you don't go up, you'll go down. It is as, as simple as that. Mm -hmm. Even if you need to maintain the flat line, it looks like a flat line, but actually you have been going up and perhaps you have been able to maintain that flat line. It's, it's, uh, yeah. it's a different ball to ball game altogether. For any entrepreneurs, whether it is a pan shop, whether it is a small tea shop, whether it's a big empire, I think they have to uh, come out with uh, new stuff. What Because see, the generation is changing, right? Now there is an online platforms coming in. So if tomorrow we don't sell to online guys we are we don't have any online presence i don't know how we will survive so we'll have to figure out something you know we'll have to figure out where we are going and how we are going to develop our markets the markets are changing the market behavior the pattern is changing and it will keep so it will um, keep doing so all the time you know like what people were buying 20 years back they are not buying today you know Okay. Uh, one or two questions which are a little uh, value-based. You did talk about how you stick to what you promise to your customer. Uh, All the time, in, every time. In India, we've had a huge problem with bureaucracy uh, because of well, we've we've had 70, 80 years. Yeah, to you are getting the, me into the you are getting me into the spot where I don't know if I want to say something or not. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I do realize that. And uh, that is the practical part of it. We cannot deny that we stay in a society where our values may or may not be shared by those who we have to deal with on a uh, in a paperwork manner in other areas of society. So when you are challenged by those kind of things, what is your point of view and how do you how do you manage to take calls? Because these are important issues and if you are doing business successfully as you seemingly are, it's even more difficult to uh, question yourself because why are you doing it? Why does those do those things come to your mind? If they do, how do you deal with those things? Or are you so like I've had friends who say, I'm going to give 50 people a salary. Their house is running away from me. So let's not talk about all these things. And I don't have an answer, honestly. I think, I don't I think they, they are all easy. helping us. We, we all help each other, you know, uh, build our lives. And that's all. That's why I don't have a house. 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 Everybody will do. Even if, you know, the, the life goes on. It's, if anybody thinks that it's because of that, it's because of that. I think that's a wrong way very, very <laughs> to look at things. So my question, yeah, yeah still stays. So how do you deal with these questions that come to your mind? Ki ab kya karo? Or if there is an example that you can share, which is possible, so I would See, be happy. Uh, I would say if the problem is from the bureaucracy or some government policy or some circulation or anything, solve the problem then and there. Don't wait for long, you know. Maybe it will give you, it'll, it, it has its costs, you know. But solve the problem then and there. Don't wait for the problem to linger on and then, you know, become big or maybe become small. Don't wait for it. Just solve the problem then and there. Move forward. Simple. But rightly or wrongly doesn't count or does that count? You cannot solve it wrongly. No, if you do it wrongly, you, it is not solved. You have to do it the right way. Wonderful, wonderful, and that's a that right way has its costs, but you got to do it. Wonderful. Um, have you? Uh, the other question is not got to do with values, but in a way, I want to understand uh, the landscape of. Uh, since you traveled so much, maybe uh, you could tell us a story about when you went for business somewhere and. Uh, because of the unplanned part of it, you landed up not doing business but had a good time which you did not plan for. Is there anything like that that you can share with us? So many, so many times, you know. <laughs> Especially when you go to Northeast India earlier, you know, 10 years back, 15 years back, even 6, 7 years back. Uh, there could be curfews or there could be shutdowns just announced now and, you know, you... You are sitting in a hotel and you know that you, for two days you cannot go out. So it has happened and you know, you make good friends there, uh, sitting in the hotel, speaking to people. So a lot of, lot of times it has happened, you know, when we have gone and for some reason we could not do business or suppose there is a, uh, there's a landslide. If we are going to Himachal or uh, Uttarakhand and then you know that you cannot travel a lot and then you know, so that's a part of it. You enjoy it and that's all. Wonderful. So yeah, I'm from, gonna... I, I, I'll just give you one, uh, uh, you know, sorry to interrupt you. I'll just give yeah. you one um, thought. I'm coming from uh, 70s, 80s, you know, like background. That time we did not have mobile phones. Today we have, we have this technology where I am speaking and you are listening and you know, you are people can view it. So that time, a lot of uncertainties was there. Yeah. It, it was there, you know, a lot of uncertainty was there. And uh, so I'm coming from that place, you know, I've seen that and I'm seeing this. So there is nothing to worry, you know, everything will fall into its own place. You know, this, the world is not going to get over or something like that, you know. Uh, there are some things which are very important and urgent sometimes, like important also and urgent also. But most of the time they are important and or not so important or urgent. And you move on, you know. You one one does not have to really worry. Oh, ye ho gaya, aise ho gaya, this has happened. What should I do? 
there was a lot of uncertainty in back when i started doing business um, things will come after seven days something i have applied it will come after one month so now everything is happening quickly you know we are faster it's okay even the solutions are coming faster i want something i want some product one just needs to have market for it and he can create it you know it's everything is very very fast true i think this is a very wonderful episode in the sense of you spoken about the unplanned and uncertain with a very uh, light sense of being if i were to call it it is light only it, <laughs> yeah but most because most of us uh, are so perturbed by what is happening and uh, we make a big deal out of what may not actually be a big deal but here you are you are talking about i if i've gone there and there's a landslide nothing can be done so i have just accepted the inevitable and moved on we okay, what next two things you know one which you can control one which you can control don't think about something which you cannot control try to do something about you know which you can control so that one second see we started uh, our journey of life it has started with uncertainty we listen from others that we have taken but we don't know when we took part no i i don't think if anyone knows when we are going to die we don't know so it is two uncertainties one certainty in between you know that is also full of uncertainties so it's okay it's 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 okay yeah everything is okay it's, it's uh, well said well said uh, thank you for taking this time and uh, thank i you enjoyed so much, this Nandarji. brief chat it and it is very enjoyable great thank I'll you so much i'll see you thank you, thank you.